Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 6E of Useful Genetics. This is the first of a couple of lectures about the phenomenon of being able to type the human genome for the presence of SNPs, markers of genetic difference. And in this lecture, we're going to introduce the resource called HapMap. First, we'll do a little reminder about what SNPs are, what they mean. Then we'll talk about how HapMap came about briefly, and then I'll give you a guided tour of HapMap showing how we can use it to understand human genetic diversity. So we'll start with a slide from Module 1 where we look at some terminology for thinking about human genetic differences. So the first term we introduced was an SNV, a single nucleotide variant. It's a place in the genome where different DNA, different DNAs from different individuals may have different sequences. Um, and it's a sing where a single nucleotide differs. And then we introduced the term single nucleotide polymorphism. Now you remember we had already defined polymorphism as a genetic difference that was present in at least 1% of the alleles. So a relatively common difference, not a very rare difference. And a single nucleotide polymorphism is just a single nucleotide variant that's relatively common. The rarer allele is present in at least 1% of individuals. And then we introduce the term haplotype, which is a way to talk about segments of DNA that have more than one difference from some standard reference sequence. So here are two genomes, and I've marked the places where those two genomes differ in sequence. So here genome 1 has a T, genome 2 has a G, etc. And we describe its pattern of differences as the haplotypes of these genomes for this segment. You'll see later, we'll talk about haplotypes more in part two of the course. You'll see it has broader uses as well. But here we're applying it to relatively short segments of DNA sequence. And we can illustrate the haplotypes by leaving out all the places where everybody's the same and indicating only the places where they differ. So HapMap began as part of the Human Genome Project. Um, if you know about the Human Genome Project at all, you probably think of it as a, the goal was to find out the DNA sequence of the whole genome. Or because at that time we were only beginning to think about genetic diversity, we thought of there being one human genome sequence rather than a slightly different human genome sequence for each person in the world. Um, the HapMap Project set out to explicitly think about genetic diversity. And what they did was they cataloged the presence of SNPs in the genomes, and they looked in different populations and at different individuals in each population. And the result was two things. One was data on the frequency of the alleles of more than a million SNPs in 11 different populations from all over the world. And the other, and that's mostly what we're going to talk about in this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll describe another valuable thing that HapMap produced was these SNPs were all mapped onto the human genome sequence. So the relationship of each SNP to genes and other functionally important parts of the genome are known. So in their interim report, they'd already identified 1.4 million SNP sites in four different populations. And this was a really super breakthrough. Um, here's the title of their paper. This was 2001, the very first time we really knew about human genetic diversity across the whole genome. So now I'm going to give you a guided tour of HapMap because I'd like you to be comfortable enough that you would try and look at it yourself as a way to understand the genetic diversity of the people where you live. So we'll begin with the home page for HapMap. It's just www.hapmap.org or just Google HapMap and you'll come to this page. There's all, these pages are quite dry. They have a lot of text on them. So I'm going to indicate what I've clicked on at each step. 
So here, what I'm going to do is click on the link to the, the genome browser, the interface that lets you actually look at the data. And when we do that, we come to this page. Again, there's a lot of text here. Um, you can search for things. If you know what you're doing, you can search for anything you want. If you don't know what you're doing, you can just click on one of the examples. And look, here's our friend BRCA2. So let's click on BRCA2 and see what we get. What we get is a map, an ideogram, a drawing of human chromosome 13. That's the chromosome that the BRCA2 gene is on. And we have a vertical yellow line indicating the location of this gene, BRCA2. And the thickness of a, the line is an accurate indicator of how big the gene is relative to the chromosome. The chromosome altogether is about 115 million base pairs long. We don't want to think about all that, so let's zoom in on the region containing BRCA2. And what we've got now is, well, it's smaller, it's about 2 million base pairs long. And BRCA2, again, is indicated by the yellow line. It's fatter because we're only looking at a little bit of the chromosome now. Now, here's another slide from Lecture 1.0 um, that I used to illustrate um, the nature of SNPs. So this is the um, blow-up of the BRCA2 gene to a more tractable region that just contains the gene. The gene is about 85,000 base pairs long. It's a pretty big gene. And here, I think I used this to illustrate the structure of genes, here are the exons of the BRCA2 gene. Little exons, there's a big exon, little exons. All of the exons, all the spaces in between are, let's make them white, introns. That's an intron, an intron, an intron. Now, in the middle of the slide, I'm sure you've noticed, there's this big mess of red and blue letters, A's and G's and C's and T's. What are these? These are the SNPs, and I'll blow up the chromosome a little bit more to make it easier to understand what we're looking at. So again, here's another slide from Lecture 1.0, and this slide was used to point out something that I didn't mention earlier, that although in principle any single SNP position, single nucleotide polymorphism, could exist in four different alleles, some with A, some with G, some with C, some with T. In reality, the SNPs that we find in real populations almost always have only two common alleles. So here's our blow up of about 20 KB. 20,000 base pairs of human chromosome 13, including part of the um, BRCA gene, BRCA2. Now it's a little easier to see that these red and blue letters come in pairs and that the pairs are at particular positions along the chromosome. So in fact, each pair, a blue letter and a red letter, is a SNP. The T is the common allele, the, the blue letter, the red letter is the less common allele, and its position along the line is the position in the sequence of this SNP. So this particular SNP is in the middle of this intron. This SNP, this is another SNP, it's in this exon, and so are this SNP and this SNP and this SNP and this SNP, probably all in this exon. Um, this SNP, again, is in an intron. These are in an exon. Now let's go back to our slightly bigger picture showing the full BRCA2 gene. We can mouse over any of these SNPs. So I think um, we're going to choose this one. Yes. 
And when we mouse over it, a window pops up showing us a lot of information about this particular SNP. Now you could mouse over any SNP in this diagram, in this page, and get the information for that SNP. For this SNP, we have basically two kinds of information here. The information on the left in the table is information about the population. These are the 11 different populations that the HapMap Consortium studied. There are five African, four African populations, Yoruba in Ibadan, Maasai in Kenya, Luya in Kenya, and African ancestry people living in the southwestern USA. There are two groups of Caucasians, I'll use white for the Caucasians, um, American Caucasians living in Utah, and Tuscan Caucasians living in Italy. There are four Asian populations, I'll do them in blue, Han Ch Chinese, other Chinese, these were selected because they lived in Denver, um, Japanese in Tokyo, and Gujarati Indians, people from India who were living in Houston, Texas. Um, you can guess where the research projects were carried out. Um, and finally, there was one population of Mexican ancestry. These would be, I think, New World Mexican ancestry living in Los Angeles. Now, on the other half of the table, we see the alle allele frequencies. So for this SNP, there's a C allele. The common allele is C. The less common allele is T. And for each population, here's the frequency of that allele. So the African Americans have 61% of them have 61% of their alleles are C's, 39% are T's. And when you start to look at this, you'll start to see patterns. First, all the populations are different. The African populations are all fairly similar. They have moderately high frequencies of the T allele. The Asian populations have low pop frequencies of the T allele. The Europeans are kind of in the middle. Now we can mouse over another, another SNP, another position in the gene, and we will get different frequencies, different distributions in the same 11 populations. Now, there's one more thing that we can do with HapMap, but before I do that, I want you to think about, again, thinking back to a question that we dealt with in Module 1 in Lecture 1.0, and that is, converting the frequency of alleles into a predicted frequency of diploid genotypes. So HapMap tells us that for this particular SNP, um, and I don't know, remember where it is in the genome, there's a T allele that's in 98%, 98 of the alleles in African Americans were T, and only 2% were G. What percent of these people, these African Americans, do you think are homozygous for the T allele? So you've got the frequency of the allele. What we want to know now is the frequency of people who are TT, not the people who are TG or GG. We don't want those. We want these people. 